Hello! It's time for the first, and almost certainly last, Poundland Girls Toys special. Because sometimes girls' toys are amusing as well, just not as often, which is why I've never featured them before. And I'll tell you what little girls really like. Aircraft carriers. No, hang on. Cute animals. And we go straight into that with my perfect pets. Not actually my perfect pets, but the perfect pets of whoever made this. Or perhaps they're hoping they're the perfect pets of whoever's going to buy it. Do you see how that works? Close! My perfect pets. Stackable pet playhouse. Oh, fantastic, because uh, when you buy a house for your pets, the first question you ask is, can I put another one on top of it? Um, slightly worrying mascot of a sort of brown dog made out of old sackcloth that appears to be collapsing in on itself, possibly due to uh, strange gravitational fields. Lots of hearts in the background, made by a company called Top Toys. Collect them all? No thanks. Apparently there's a pink cat available. Is that a cat? I don't know. Actually, it could be a dog. It could be a fox. It could be something they've found in a meteorite. Um, some sort of beige cat, a panda, and a duck. And in this one, yes, we'll come to the post-it note in a minute. That's the funny part. Um, we've got a pink house and a little rabbit there with a load of dirt on its head looking up in a worried manner. You'll see why it's looking up in a worried manner in a second. Ages three and up. Smaller children will swallow it, honest. Specially produced for top toys, blah, blah, blah. Nought to three, sad onions, we know how that works. <clears throat> now, you get two pets with this. The first is the bunny rabbit, which makes sense. A little cute animal for the kiddies. The other one, it's a crocodile. Or possibly an alligator of some kind, I can't really tell. Could potentially be a mutant dinosaur that just looks like a crocodile. Why is it a crocodile? Why... Why? Why? What little girl thinks, hmm, for Christmas, I want a pussycat, and I want a cute puppy dog, and I want a crocodile. I'll tell you the sort of little girl who asks for that. The sort of little girl whose head spins 360 degrees while she yells obscenities at Father Karras. Anyway, <clears throat> let's have a look at what they're actually like inside. Mm, don't get a whole lot for your money. Here's, oh, that lasts a long time. <clears throat> Presumably this can be fixed easily, since it came off in my hand instantly. Yep, there we are. Here's the filthy hutch it can live in. Well, the rabbit, presumably. I don't think crocodiles generally come with hutches. Can we get the dirt off the cute rabbit's forehead? Nope. Oh my god! It's not just dirt, it's all horrible scratches. Like somebody's trying to drill into the uh, rabbit's brain. Oh, we're doing an ex-experiment rabbit, bless it. Oh, well, it's oh, it's got blood pouring down its neck. <laughs> Look, what the? This is getting a little bit uh, frightening. Frankly, there's all blood in its cage as well. What's going on here? This didn't come from a pet shop. All right, you, you go and sit in there and uh, get over your traumatic past. And we'll have a look at the uh, crocodile with a weird skull head. It looks like one of the Pokemon. What's the Pokemon with the skull for head? Um, no, not Michael Foot. Um... Cubone? No, I'm not sure about that, actually. I'm not very good on Pokemons. Well, its mouth sort of opens and closes, and it's just basically a rubbery mess. And it doesn't make any... Oh, it actually looks really gummy. It looks like it hasn't got any teeth. How bizarre. For Christmas, I want a gummy crocodile as a pet. Yes, just like every little girl. Right, enough of that, and time for a more traditional girl's toy. Little princess. Cute kids. Ooh, that was a close one. Blimey. Little princess cute kids, I ask you. More like little princess eldritch abomination. Good grief. And then look at this on the bottom of the packet. All they need is love. Yes, all they need is love. And their own body weight in human flesh every 12 hours. Good grief. Right, let's see if we can now look at something slightly less terrifying, which could be anything else that's physically existed in the history of the universe. How about... I love my fairy tale pony! Yes, it's a plastic pony of a sort you're probably familiar with. Collect them all. No thanks. Three plus. Lots of pictures of the pretty horses. Yes, as we used to sing in the 1980s, 
My little pony, bendy and bony. Which was a stupid thing to sing, because the My Little Pony toys were neither bendy nor bony. But uh, it upset the girls, and that was the main reason we were doing it. In fact, the reason that My Little Ponies always seemed absolute crap, toy-wise, was that they weren't bendy. Um, there was sort of no articulation on them. They were just kind of a plastic lump with hair which uh, was a bit limiting and nowhere near as cool as the toys the boys got to have. Um, in fact, I think there was only one point of articulation. There was a cut neck. I'm not actually sure if the head did move, now I think about it, but uh, I distinctly remember there being the sort of cut neck thing because that gave rise to the fact that it looked like all their throats had been slit and all the hilarious jokes off the back of that, like, oh, look, it's the My Little Pony abattoir. What's on the back of the packet, everybody? Nothing except the words fairy tale pony and an address. What is interesting, though, is if you look here, Warning, not suitable for children on the age of three years due to small parts, adult supervision recommended. The sad onion has escaped from his, um, I don't know what that is, anti-symbol. In fact, I think the anti-symbol has been printed too far to the left. So there's a sad onion on the loose. Watch out, everyone. Lock up your daughters. Right, let's get back to this then. She loves her fairy tale pony, doesn't she? That's why she's not looking at it, and she's looking at the fairy above her instead. Terrible spokeswoman. Actually, there's something slightly worrying about her. Look, it's got a sort of weird, empty, vapid look in the eyes. I think it's because she's dead. Seriously, look. Tiny little thin neck, huge heavy head. Neck's just snapped and she's about to go over backwards and collapse in a heap on the floor. Oh dear. Well, on that bombshell, let's have a look at the horsey itself, shall we? It's pink! You may have noticed that. It's got some mascara on, which is a bit odd. And it's got some stars on its bum. Um, that was the distinguishing feature of My Little Ponies, if I recall. They will pretty much look the same, just in different pastely colours. And some of them had different tattoos on their arses. That was the sophistication of the 80s for you. Um, what's this? It's a sunflower comprised of a sticky mirror thing that doesn't work. And a brush for you to brush its mane with... Come on, pony, I shall name you Bumfire. <coughs> that's very knotty. You have to put some conditioner through that. And, uh, yeah, that's probably going to all come out and go over the carpet as well. Oh, yes, look, we have got a cut neck, and it spins around. I don't know why I did that, but it amused me nonetheless. Um, oh, something... Look, that's got proper sort of eyebrows. Did the originals have that? And it's got red hooves. Which, um, is that like red nail varnish? I've got no idea. Well, I've got to say, for 99 pence, it's pretty much exactly as I remember the old My Little Ponies to be. It's, you know, a solid lump of plastic with hair. In fact, if anything, this goes a bit further because it's slightly more actually horse um, proportioned and has the eyelashes. So maybe it's actually better than the My Little Ponies were and it only cost a pound. Or was it 99p? I'm trying to remember which store I got it from. No, this one was 99p stores. There, as if it really matters. Um, you only won't get anything much cheaper than that, unless you really are just looking for a lump with hair sticking out of it. In that case, you can get them for free. You can find them dangling from a sheep's arse. But uh, they won't smell as nice as that and will probably be less aesthetically pleasing. I anyway. Enough cutesy stuff, I'm now just going to drag out something that happened to be in the girls' toys section, but probably because they didn't have room for it anywhere else. You know how there's an iPad? You know how there's an iPhone? You know how there was that weird sort of thing that stands in between them that's about the same size as an iPhone but has the aspect ratio of an iPad? Of course you don't, it doesn't exist. But that didn't stop our good friends at Fantastic making one. Playtime pad phone with fun ringtones. Mm, judging by that packaging, aimed at people very young. And judging by the sticker on the front, aimed at people who don't really want anything that looks really like a phone. In fact, it's um, billing itself as pad phone and has kind of no numbers. It's just got iPod-like controls and their own logo huge in the middle. Thanks, lads. That's really good of you. But on the plus side, it does come with two genuine Penasamic batteries. <gasps> Is that like balsamic? Can I make vinegar out of them? Um, tell you what. Let's rip it open and see what noises we can get it to make. Battery instructions, don't eat them. Thanks, but I'd work that out. Ooh, have a look at that. It's a particularly disturbing, um, sad onion there, if the autofocus ever catches up. 
Oh man, that took a while, didn't it? Is this thing getting slower with old age or something? Something odd about that. It looks sort of really genuinely upset. Hmm, slightly. Let's put a dampener on things. Oh no! I didn't bring a screwdriver. Hang on. I'll go and get the orange one. Oh, jump cut. I've got the screwdriver now. You can probably tell. Well, I'm sure this is going to be really worthwhile, and in no way something that just makes a couple of annoying beeping noises. That is, of course, assuming that the genuine penasmig, pen, no, sorry, penasamig batteries work. Oh, there's a really long hair. Where is that? Oh, it's from the My Little Pony, isn't it? Of course. Oh, sorry, uh, not My Little Pony. I love my fairy tale pony. I wouldn't want to get confused and possibly sued. Right, time for beeps. It's a bit quiet. It's a dog. How many people get phoned up by dogs? What? May I help you? Okay. Okay, you've been phoned by the dog, and then it goes into this. I hope you can hear that, actually, because it's incredibly quiet at this end. Um, are there any other buttons? Yes, there appear to be two. Oh, no, four. They all do the same thing. Wow, that's quite bad, actually, even for the very low standards of the place it came from. Although, I have just noticed, it's got a weird set of fake buttons on the bottom and on the side there. Well, that adds countless extra play value, I'm sure. Slightly freaked out by that high-speed tune. Sounds like something uh, where the devil is trying to communicate with you, you know. Like happens every night when you go to sleep. Or is that just me? Anyway, final toy. This doesn't really fit to the bill today, but I don't care because somebody sent it to me and it made me laugh. It did. It is a sailing boat. Hooray. Looks vaguely electric. Put some batteries in it, put it in the bath, and it probably goes along. Or you can put it in the lake, it'll go along, and then you can't get it back afterwards. Um, the reason I like it is because of bad spellings. Sailing boat on the boat has become sailing boat. Vaguely amusing. The boat itself is referred to as three funny boat. Oh, that's the best kind of boat. But by far my favourite is rather than superior, they've written Sue Pryor. <laughs> I absolutely love that. If I ever meet anybody called Sue Pryor, I shall give them this boat. Sue, Sue, got your boat here? Fantastic. Perhaps it's the start of a new worldwide alternate reality game. Where in the world is Susan Pryor? I don't know. Also, they've got a stylized sad onion. don't know if you can make that out there. I barely can with the naked eye. It's got kind of a uh, missing nose. Looks more like an apple, actually. Maybe the onion was ill, so an apple stood in. But by far the greatest thing about this, no, it's not the plain cardboard back, is up the corner here. For ages three plus. Rather than the negative aspect of the sad onion that says, naught to three, you can't have it, this one says, three plus, you can have it. You see, putting a positive spin on things. And rather than a sad onion, you've got a smug lemon. Well, all right, it's a bit round for a lemon. I'm trying to think of a round yellow fruit. Don't think there is one. Maybe it's a lemon that's viewed from the end, so it looks round. Maybe it's the sun itself. No, because smug sun doesn't sound as good or as funny as smug lemon. Yeah, let's stick with smug lemon. Not that we'll ever see it again, I hope. So there you have it. Girls' toys for ultra-cheap prices, none of them very good. Although, to be entirely fair, the fake My Little Pony, you know, as we said, does the job. And for the pound, you can't complain. It'll keep the kids quiet until they die because the hair turns out to be toxic or something. Anyway, that's the end of all that. I'm sure there are no loose ends to tie up. I will return. No, you fucking won't.